Hello, everybody. We are ever again here for the fantastic new interview in the afternoon. Today we have an exceptional interview because we don't have, unfortunately, the recording of that artist, but we have a big honor to invite today Ian Ivan Ronchia from Romania, who is now at the moment in at home in Bucharest. So he's really one of the also one of the most important icons and idols for of the harp world. And uh, he's really one of the best harpists ever. He was not only the winner of the Israel competition, but of many, many, many other prizes. He's usually very often at the World Harp Congresses and also at the juries of the international competition. You certainly know him so well, so that I don't need to introduce him. But just for those who are not from the harp world, I just wanted to say a few words about him, but we will hear many of his memories, experiences and histories as well, and all his plans. And I'm so happy to welcome Ian Ivan Ron today to be with us. Welcome, Jan. Thank you, Jana. Thank you very much for inviting me and congratulations for the, what you do with this uh, the new new Harp channel and with this first uh, online World Harp competition, con Congress, etc. And you are full of energy and uh, enthusiastic and uh, very, very, very good promoter of the heart and the music in general, so congratulations. Thank you, thank you so much. But you are the one who is really the ambassador of the harp and the male harp is, which is very rare. Some people say it's very rare, but we know that it's not as rare. But of course, you are less people playing the harp as a male than the women. How does it, did it come that you started to play the harp? Well, um, it was by chance. You know, I was born in a, in a village near Bucharest, the capital city of Romania. And um, um, I had a very nice voice as a child. And uh, my family and my first teacher uh, considered that I have also talent for music. They sent, uh, sent me to the music school in Bucharest. That time in Bucharest was only one, one important music school. Then I gave an examination of aptitudes, and um, from the jury, there came a lady, very distinguished, very nice person, and um, asked me to show my hands, and asked me if I, uh, if I know what is the heart, if, and if I like the heart. Um, and I said, yes, but I didn't. Would you like to play the heart? And I said, yes. Um, that was practically my my choice, even if I didn't hear, if I didn't, haven't seen or, or nothing about the heart. But I think it's, it's been a nice uh, choice. And um, the heart was my instrument, which made, gave, gave me the possibility to make music. And that's great. That's so I, I choose by chance, like, like this, you know, very simple. And unusual because you know the majority of artists say, "Well, when I saw first time on the television or on a stage, when I when I saw first time the harp, so lovely sound, looking nice, I I um, I decided to play the harp when I fall in love with the harp, etc." No, to me it was by chance, and I saw it first time at the first harp lesson. We began ten ten pupils that that year. Um, the, this harp, the, this instrument, and um, when I saw it, it's been a Russian, new, uh, in bronze, very shiny instrument, and I, I imagine that it's probably gold, it's made by gold, and uh, when I went uh, out and um, I uh, met my, my father, he asked me, how is the instrument? Well, I said that I was, uh, well, I, I, I would study the harp. And how, what is it? He asked me. I said, it's something being like a, like a stove, you know, like a stove. <laughs> and um, it's all, uh, it's all by, by, made by, by, by gold. And he said, that's impossible to be such big and gold. And I said, how will you buy me a harp, a golden harp? And he said, you know, you have to, to work, to practice. And let me the problem of, uh, of, uh, <laughs> of buying an instrument. <laughs> that was my first meeting with, with the instrument. So nice, 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 uh, very nice uh, uh, situation. And um, probably 
that influenced completely my life. That's fantastic. So you did not play any instrument before? It was your first? Absolutely. No, I was um, 10 years and a half. I studied the first four, four uh, years in, the, in my village. And um, the, the only connection with the music was that I had a nice voice. And my parents and the teacher considered that I, I have talent for music, but I didn't know any instrument. Except maybe the fact that sometimes in uh, reunions, in weddings, I heard some, some instruments. My father played very little the piccolo like an amateur instrumentalist, but only for, for himself. And um, my mother had a, also a nice voice, but that was my, my, my connection. That was uh, all my connection with, with the music, nothing about harp, about uh, classic music. Mm -hmm. So I went to the music school in Bucharest and began with, with the, that distinguished ladies, lady Marika Pessione, the one who was in the jury and asked me, invited me to play the harp. She was a fantastic, fantastic uh, professor, pedagogue. Uh, we had a very special um, relationship. She considered me like her son, and um, even she wanted to adopt me, you know, but uh, while well, remaining very, very close relationship. I remember that um, at the school we had Russian harps, not very good, but good enough for practicing, but in weekends and in uh, vacations, in holidays, I went to, to Mrs. Uh, Pas uh, Pesione's home and practice there, sometimes uh, uh, having lessons, or, and um, especially in, in, uh, in holidays. Because I didn't like so much to stay home, I mean, in that my village, it's not enough satisfactory for me what to do in a village when I, from now I had another uh, opening, another, another horizon, you know? And um, uh, I prefer to, to, to be in Bucharest with my teacher, with my, my instrument, with the harp. And I stayed almost all vacations, all, all holidays in Bucharest um, um, for practicing not very much because I never practice very much. Uh, but to be with this, with this lady, with this uh, lady of the heart, Marika Pesion, she was the one who, who practically made me to play the heart. For, she was the, the deci decisive person in doing this. So she brought you the luck for this instrument as well, certainly. Yeah. And I studied with her for a few years, probably five years. And after that, she went to uh, intention, she was in time. And I continued the last three years of the high school in Bucharest with Madame Maria Belli, who was a former student of Marita Pensione. Mm -hmm. And um, when I finished in 1966 uh, the school, mm -hmm. I played for the first time as a soloist with the, school orchestra a concerto, solo con con concerto with, with orchestra. Which I one? Don't even know. It's been uh, something very, very nice, but now it's not so, so played. It's the Fantasy by Theodore Dubois. It's a romantic music like uh, Sensas. This is very nice for that, uh, that uh, age, you know. And after that, I went to the Conservatoire in Bucharest, which now, now it's named the National University of Music in Bucharest, mm -hmm. and uh, worked for five years with uh, Madame Pasquale. Diana Pasquale, um, I think she was a renowned, renewed harpist. She was a very good professor, and she had a fantastic uh, uh, background because she studied in uh, Santa Cecilia. And after that, in Paris, we stood mm here. -hmm. And um, I think that if somebody asked me about the Romanian harp school, I may, I, I, I have to say that we have Italian and French origins. Why? Because the first harpist in Romania was an Italian lady, Elodia Casali, married Quanda who came in, uh, 90, in 1892 in, in, in Bucharest. 
and uh, opened the first hard class at the Conservatoire of Music and Drama um, from Romania. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly she formed a lot of artists in, in Romania. And after the, the Second World War, in 1945, Mrs. Pascoli came to Bucharest, uh, played for an opera orchestra, and uh, in 1948, she became the harp teacher at the conservatoire in Bucharest. So I studied here between 66 and 70, uh, 71, no, yeah, 71. And um, when I uh, when I was in the fourth year, I participated for the first time to the competition in Israel, the contest in Israel. Why? Because uh, I had the chance to meet uh, Martin Gilio. She she was my age, and she came in Bucharest to play with the radio orchestra. We became friends. I played to her, and she encouraged me to to try to this competition, to, to, to play in this competition. So in 1970, I was for the first time at this competition. I didn't win any prize, but I saw that um, I have a quite good level for a such competition. And after six years, I came back and won on the first prize. So. That is, in short, uh, the evolution, the beginning of my, my harp activity and uh, mm, reaching probably with this first prize in Israel, one of the most important prizes uh, of my trophy, of my activity. It's yeah. unbelievable because, of course, it is a... You were the only Romanian since even before, even after, who won this competition. Uh, one yes, but not not the only the only uh, participant. In 1970, there was another lady, another girl from Romania, Margareta Ignatescu, and um, also in, in 1976, there was another another um, young girl from Romania, very good harpist. Uh, Daniela Waller, who lives now in, uh, in Germany, and it's, it's a very, very good harpist. So, but I was the, the, the only Romanian harpist who won this competition. And if I'm not wrong, I think um, I was the first male harpist who won a competition, harp competition. Of course, so, the yeah. first male harpist, indeed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. This is not really important, but. Okay, because the, the critics wrote, you know, they wrote that the first male harpist who won a competition is the Romanian, Yonivan Roncha, and he won a golden harp. Many, many persons ask me, is really a golden harp? No, it has some flowers <laughs> painted in it. <laughs> but you know how are the, the, the journalists, you know. Yeah. Um, but do you, do you remember, do you remember, I know that maybe it's, uh, but for us, who were ever in, at such a competition, we still have in memory the program and this. Do you remember what was on the program? Ooh. At least some of the main pieces. Wow. At the final, for example, at the final stage the, with the orchestra. The stage, I remember the final stage, yeah. The, the, there was the Capriccio by Walter Piston and um, the Boyle Dias Concerto. Boyle Dias Concerto, yeah. And um, but I didn't reach the final stage. Most probably, I was uh, per, uh, in the in the ranking maybe 10, 11, 12 candidates. It's the edition that Chantal Mathieu, well, the fourth fourth uh, international contest in Israel. Chantal was the first prize. Catherine, Catherine Michel, the Piston, Capriccio, and the uh, Boyle Concerto. But after six years, in 1977, at the sixth edition of the competition, I remember better the, the, the program. And the final was something which is very dear to, to me, Debussy's dances. I could say that this one, these dances and the concerto by Mozart are my favorites from the art uh, uh, solo repertoire. And um, Kinaster, which is also my favorite among the contemporary concertos for art. This is really something 
powerful and very consistent. Wow. In um, 76 was Ginastera already. That's, that's something very special because at that time it was really very contemporary con concerto for that time. Yes, uh, but I uh, before this, when I was student, even in, in the school, I had a um, recordings at the music library in Bucharest. No, library, music, um, how is that? Uh, bibliotheque. No, library. Music library in, in, in Conservatoire in Bucharest. And there was a recording with Zavaleta playing this concerto. So I knew before how this sounds, but we didn't play accompanied by orchestra, mm -hmm. but by, by the piano. And the VC was uh, accompanied by, by, by an orchestra. Not um, Nasera probably it costed a lot of money that time yeah, to rent the material. Yeah. All right. What would you like to know? Ah, well, well I would say that after this, I consider that um, the the doors of the of, uh, international activity to me. I I don't say career activity were open. Because um, I received a lot of invitation after winning this first prize, and more, not more than that, but very important was the prize itself, which is concert and especially instrument. Line and Healy. This one, this instrument, what I choose from Chicago factory, um, it's a model uh, 20 style, 23 natural, very nice instrument. Um, ah, I have to tell you something about a small story about this. During the competition, probably during the second stage, Henning Christensen, who was at that time uh, the, the vice president of Lionel Hill in Chicago, asked me, Jon, what will happen if you will win the competition? You, you should come to, to Chicago to, to select the instrument, to choose the instrument. And I said, well, I don't know if this will happen. I don't know if I will win the competition. And in any case, it's difficult to come to Chicago because I don't have enough money to take the trip. <laughs> and he said, and he said, okay, you win the competition, we pay the, the, the trip and take the instrument. And when when I when when they announced the, the, the results of the the contest. I remember that Henning Christensen was also very happy for me. I was the only, the only um, contestant without a, um, an, an instrument, a, a personal instrument. No, no, probably not, because also the, the Romanian, uh, my my uh, my colleague uh, Daniela Walla didn't have. But in any case. I played one a 17, Ryan and he did 17, but a, sm a smaller one that they told me that belonged to the Rubin Academy in um, Jerus Jerusalem and belonged to Max, uh, Harpo Marx. Oh, wow. Harpo Marx. Well, I don't know if the story is it's, it's correct, but they told this that it is a present from, from the family, Marx, and belonged to Harpo Marx. And uh, I played on this one because I was not uh, used enough to play with big harps. That's why I chose a smaller one and in a very good, uh, in a very, very good shape as an instrument. All right. After that, I, I, I told you that I um, received this instrument. And I, when I went to, in, to America, to the United States, um, there happened, happened something else very, very important and dear to me. Pearl Sherto, who was in the jury, some uh, both juries in 1970, 1976. Um, she liked me and appreciated me very much and encouraged me. She offered me a, a private scholarship. So in January 77, I, I, I worked with her. And after that, I went to Chicago, select the instrument. The company, Slane and Healy, organized for me a, a concert in order to to baptize the, the, the instrument, I mean, to to show the instrument to the, the public, to the audience. And I came back to New York City and also continue my studies with lessons with, um, with um, Pearl Shertok. And um, 
Mm-hmm. Tell, us about, uh, tell us about this because it will be also interesting to know how was it with with the teacher in New York. And uh, of course, we know the the suite which she wrote, and it will be really interesting to know. Uh, do you know what? I, I didn't understand uh, all, all words. No, about your studies in New York, if yeah. you can. Yeah. Well, I um, was invited by Pearl to stay their home, and um, we had almost all day, um, every day, a lesson. But the lesson was very different than the, the ones in, in the academy or in the new school. Uh, practically, practically, I practice. I practice the heart, the heart, and um, her sitting and doing something else in in the house um, made me some suggestions, some 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 critics, uh, some uh, um, ideas. He gave me some ideas. Sometimes he came um, and explained me, showed me on the instrument. Uh, or said, um, you know, uh, attention, or attention to the left hand because she, he is, the, the sound is uh, acoustic is not balanced. Uh, why don't you, um, why don't you pay attention to this A when always when you play this fifth A, you make a buzz. So please correct it. You are enough um, old. It, uh, you, you you know enough part, but please correct it. But yourself, she was not a criticizing person, but uh, very attentive, and um, she encouraged me. Fantastic, because I I was a person with um, good qualities, but not very confident on myself. I needed somebody to to push me, and she was. She has done this. In the at the right, right uh, moment, I think for this I I remain very 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 thankful to to Persia. That's fantastic, and she was also the composer. She wrote the famous suite, which uh, we... she she uh, she wrote this suite. She made a lot of transcriptions. Uh, she had a very good connection in the music life and among the musicians in, in the states. She played very much music for movies. For the Hollywood studios, mm-hmm. um, she had a fantastic sight reading. She sometimes uh, asked me to do, invited me to to to, to do sight reading in mean, duets, and I was much much behind her. <laughs> she was she she could play everything at the first right sight reading uh, perfect, and I was um, wow. Well, Trying to, you know, yeah, fantastic artist. And um, that and here, sorry. Did you work with her on the suite which she wrote, or have you ever played it with her? Uh, no, I that I know because I didn't know and I didn't stay enough uh, to, to learn it. But uh, in 1979, because I came back in 1979 in, in, uh, in the USA. I also practice uh, um, and work with um, with Pearl, and um, also among the pieces uh, was this suite. Um, I was not very very um, very good in, in jazz that time. I didn't have enough. Uh, well, it's jazz, you know. It's not really jazz, but it's something like like jazz. And uh, I was not very very good in that. And I learned a lot of things from from Perth. Uh, why did I come in um, in the States in 1979? Another person that I met because I met, I think, uh, hundreds of harpists and um, hundreds of very good harpists. The the all celebrities of those those years. But another person which was very close to me and, and very dear to me was Anne Mason Stockton. And Mason Stockton, that time, was the president of the American Society. Later on, she became the, the chairman of the World Heart Congress, and she invited me to open the um, open the um, to, to play the, the opening recital of the conference the conference of the American Harp Societies in Oakland, in California, 1979. But 
I forgot to, to tell you something very important. Coming back to 1977, uh, Thea Bergold, who is the one of my very dear um, harpist, professor, musician, person, especially fantastic person, person, she invited me to play for the Harp Week at Kerkrade Rolduc uh, Broikel, and I don't know exactly the name because there were some different um, names for the place where we, we, we had the Harp Week, and I played two solo recitals there. One was in Herlen for the for the Harp Week, another in another city. I don't, I don't remember exactly the name. Um, and um, I had good and not very good experiences that time. I came from Wales, where I had um, some master classes and um, and concerts, and I came just 24 hours before before the the recital in uh, Poland, and I was was I was very tired. My hands were very tired because I carried my uh, uh, very heavy suitcase. That time, my suitcase had, had, uh, has not uh, wheels. So for my muscles, it's been really too, too heavy. And um, I didn't feel very confident on the first, on the first um, recital. And I remember in front of me, at two meters, where Maria Korczynska, Fia Berga, Vera Dulova, Susan McDonald, <laughs> all these celebrities, David Watkins, and um, uh, fortunately, I had another concert with the same program after three or four days, and that was uh, really much better. And um, well, I saved the situation. <laughs> let's say um, then. But I, even the first recital was wonderful because we all are, are much more critical to ourselves than the public well, accepted. I tell you, it's been okay, but I could do more. I should do more. You know, I was not totally, entirely satisfied with it. Because we I, also, you know, I play nice, like a good heart. It's like a good pupil, like a good student, not like a really, really very good soloist, like a winner, you know? Ah, just, just good enough, something like that. All right. Um, it was wonderful. Don't worry. <laughs> thank you for encouraging me. And I want to, to mention another thing which was um, important and not only important, the most important for me, even till today. Uh, the most important concert, concert of my activity, solo, in my career, was um, in August um, 1977 with the Vienna Philharmonic in the Salzburg Festival. Mm -hmm where I played with the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra and um, with um, the Paul Schulz, the, the principal flute player of the orchestra, under the button of Maestro Horstein, Mozart's concerto. And um, certainly, i never been in a such prestigious situation. Unfortunately, I didn't have have a concert at this level in a such important uh, place with it. Or festival and with such such great orchestra like Vienna, is it? So I remain with this uh, only only one collaboration with Vienna uh, Philharmonic. But I I'm proud that I had this this occasion. Fantastic. It's, it's not easy for a harpist, um, and especially from from a country former communist that time communist country. I mean, not with very close relationship with the central and western countries mm -hmm. and to be invited in uh, in a such festival has been something special and i i remain um, very impressed and uh, and proud about it and because the concert was really good so it's no, good to mention it it, it is a very big, big, of course, prestige for everybody. But I mean, for you, it was absolutely dedicated to to your work because you it's were, really, you mm -hmm. were, and you are the really fantastic virtuoso. And as I have read your biography, there is also written that you are uh, like um, uh, taken as a like another step of of the balletta, so that you absolutely 
you know, the people are talking like that about you and you really deserve it. So it's fantastic that you had this kind of opportunities. Uh, yeah, I, yeah I, I'm sure, I'm sure. All right, after that, certainly my activity continued with several concerts in Romania and in some, some countries, well, I think it's 30 or 40 countries now as a soloist. Mm -hmm. And I, I received a lot of invitations uh, following the competition in Israel, I wanted to say for master classes, for festival congresses, and so on. By the way, I said congresses. Well, I told you before that I was four times uh, I participated in the World Heart Congresses, but also before these, um, I was in Kierkrade Roldvik uh, for the Heart twice, in 1977 and 79. I saw the Mario, <laughs> I saw the Mario <laughs> Mario uh, was participated practically in, in all art congresses. It's incredible. He he became a library uh, of, of the competition of the congress because he knows so many things and he was very involved. He was always in the committee board of directors and so on. By the way, uh, between 1985 and 90, I was uh, also a member of the board of directors of the World Heart Congresses. So coming back to, to the uh, World Heart Congress, I also I would like to mention that at the second edition, the second World Heart Congress was in um, Kiryat Anavim, I think it's uh, near Jerusalem, Israel. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I was invited to play the opening concert, you know? I have some some concerts which I um, I consider very very prestigious and I, I'm proud of this. Like opening concert of the American Heart Conference uh, uh, for the Association of American Harpists, uh, the, the opening of this um, World Heart Congress, the opening of the, the the fifth International Heart Contest in Israel. In my position, of former winner, winner of the Oh, no, no, the, the sixth, seventh, seventh. Um, after I, I won the competition in 76, in 79, I was invited to, to play the opening recital for, for the edition in 1979. Fine. Okay. And here in Kiryat Anavim, I played a full recital. And I remember that was a very, very, very hot time. And... Um, I played in a in a tuxedo, you know, and at the intermission, um, Judy Liber was I don't know exactly somebody from 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 the committee asked me to take off my 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 uh, tuxedo because it's, it's been too yeah oh okay it was uh, successful after that I remained for the competition as a guest invited as a guest of honor of the, of the contest also the fourth edition. That, no, that was the same. The third was the Vienna. The Vienna that you have recorded, your, your father recorded. Unfortunately, I understood that you don't, you don't have... Um, I don't have no recordings because my father could not get in. It was so sold yeah. out that he could yeah. not get in, unfortunately. So I didn't, neither me, I was not there. So it's really no? a performance at the well, time. Um, I'm glad that you didn't find tickets, not because you didn't, but because it was sold, uh, sold out. It's normal. We were three um, Israeli first prize winners, yes. Susanna Mindonian, Martin Genio, and myself. So we shared this recital, was in the, at the Esterhazy Palace in Burgenland, and everybody played around 30 minutes, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, I remember that I played a Romanian piece by one of my, my friend composers, Ulpio Vlad, Mosaic, which was called Enescu Allegro de Concert mm -hmm. uh, for Chromatic Heart that I I play on, on the pedal heart, even if I didn't change any anything, any note, any 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 absolutely nothing, because it's hundred percent playable on, on a on the pedal heart. heart. Yeah, scintillation by Salzeto. Uh -huh. Those, yes. The those program. Are, <laughs> ah, well, I don't. I, I, well, I don't find this. I don't find this. 
And I don't remember if there was a fourth piece or not in my, my recital. I can find it out. I just find out where is it, the, your performance exactly. I remember just that there was pieces from, uh, were pieces from 20th century. Yes. I will, I will find out. I will find out. Oh, but, uh, yeah. I, I think that also uh, one of the interview with uh, was with Sonia Ingefield and she she was uh, telling that she was your student and then we had also with Sarah O'Brien who was telling mm -hmm. the stories about that concert in Vienna that, yeah. she, that it was very much raining and the, the tuning yeah. something was very very yeah. difficult. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Uh, okay, it's been nice. I don't have uh, very many, many um, memories from this because I must tell you that every time when I when I was at the All Heart Competition or, or, or um, uh, Congress or Festival, I didn't stay all, 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 all the time there. Uh, and uh, or because I was busy with my, my job or because I didn't have enough money to, to stay one week or 10 days or something like that. So I came one day, two days before I played and goodbye. The same thing happened also in, in Vienna. I, I think I said I stayed only three days uh, mm -hmm. and um, in Prague the same thing. Yes. Uh, I had a master class. And I played with the radio orchestra, the dances by the BBC, and after that I, I went home. So I don't know very much uh, mm -hmm. about these con uh, congresses. Well, um, yes, I played in four, four, four times, but I don't know very much <laughs> about the evolution of, of uh, every, every congress. I have, uh, I have now the program, what you played yeah? in uh, Vienna, you played uh, Ulpiu Vlad. Yes, this is mosaic, no? Portraits. Portraits, ah, portrait, portraits yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you played Enescu, the Allegro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you played Britain Suite. Oh, Britain, wow. Oh, this is one of my favorite. You know, let me tell you something about Britain. Yes. Huh. And only that you played also Sasso Sicilian. No, no, so, scintillation. Scintillation, sorry. Scintillation. I am. Yeah, scintillation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, I want to tell you about about uh, Britain. Well, I love this piece. I love it. I think it's very, very, very good music there. And um, I had the chance to, but I don't remember where from, to 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 receive a, a cassette with Ocean Ellis. Ocean Ellis was a good friend of Britain, and they wrote together this uh, this piece. So I knew exactly what what Britain intended, mm -hmm. and um, I began this piece with Pearl, with Pearl Shertok in New York. She was also a very, very good, a very good interpreter of, of the suite, and I played played it uh, really very, very well because I loved at the same time not only that I knew, but mm -hmm. I loved this music, and I remember that. Marinsa in 1991, I think, at the first uh, international festival in Cardiff, was organized by herself and her committee solely. After I played this, she said, wow, this is the best performance of this piece. Uh, well, I'm not sure. Maybe it was a compliment. And in any case, I, I'm sure, very, 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 really sure that I played very, very well this piece because I love it. I mean, it's your it's, piece, your it's piece. connection. Yeah, it's a connection, very good connection between me and this music. All I right. I, I wanted to invite also Oshia Ellis for the interview on Monday. Oh, great, great. He, he doesn't feel well, but he sends much love to everybody and many greetings. So I'm very sorry, but we are very happy that you can also talk about this because it's very interesting for every harpist, not only for the harpist. When you, when, when you see him, please say hello for me. We met probably in, in Holland in 1970 or 79 mm -hmm. at the Harp Week. I remember that he played a concerto with orchestra, a modern one, but I don't remember which one. And I think I met him there and certainly in Wales, he was a Welsh, Welsh yes. uh, person. Yeah, 
and um, very distinguished and very, very good musician and colleague, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bennett, instead of not instead of, but we will have like uh, her, his very good friend, and of course, wonderful harpist Eleanor Bennett is on, on Monday. Yeah, so. Sure. Eleanor Bennett, um, Anne Griffiths, they invited me in 1979, 78, 79 in, uh, in, um, in, uh, in Wales, uh, but also in 1994. For the the second uh, the second World Heart Congress, no, ninety four was Marisa who was inviting me. Okay, so these are my my memories about the, the World Heart Congress, some festivals. What could I tell you more? What could be? Well, do you have any? Because as, as some of the people really have memory memory on that concert that it was very hard, very very difficult to tune. Do you have also these memories, or it was not as important for you? Uh, well, no, not especially. I'm used to play in, uh, in bad conditions. I mean, uh, even weather bad conditions. Sometimes, sometimes it's very. I, you know, in the first five years after I finished the conservatoire, I played in opera in an opera house in Constanza. This is to uh, port of the to the Black Sea, in Romania, and there was humidity. So I had many problems with strings, with tuning. So once. Later on, I was with the Philharmonic in Bucharest in uh, in Portugal, and in in the city of Porto, uh, between the the rehearsal uh, and the concert, there were five strings broken. So wow. when I, when I arrived to the the concert hall, I should change in in a big speed five strings because they were broken. Uh, because the humidity and the, the salinity, or because mm -hmm. the salted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And oh, I hope that we have not lost the connection. Jan, are you there? I really hope that the connection works. Oh, mine. Ivan, I hope it will come back. I would like now to, if you hear me, please try to to switch off and turn back on it might uh, happen and i would like to take this opportunity for everybody to write maybe messages and maybe questions if you have any for our guest today i really hope we will be able to get connected again in case we hope that i will oh no we got disconnected so i hope that we will have a chance to to get connected again so as I mentioned, I will just take this opportunity to say that we will have one, uh, of course, a wonderful guest today again at five o'clock, which means from now it's in the one hour and 15 minutes. And we will have a, a harpist from Aust Austria, uh, Gabriela Mosirsch, who was also performing at the, the World Harp Congress in Vienna. And of course, tomorrow we will have another people for the interview, not people, one person. We will have only one interview tomorrow. We will have... Uh, um, Moya Wright, Moya Wright, who is not playing the harp anymore. She's um, working for the Lion and Healy in Chicago. And of course, she, she is a harpist who was performing. She was also the principal harpist of Hong Kong Philharmonic. So uh, she will talk about all his stories and all her uh, way of coming to uh, the harp and of course, coming out of the harp world as a performer. But I'm just afraid we are not getting in contact with um, Jan now. It seems that it has been totally disconnected. He's out of the screen now. So I hope that we will not need to finish this interview, unfortunately, at the moment. And I hope that maybe he comes back, then we will connect again. So I don't want now to talk too much by myself, but maybe it's a good opportunity to tell you some of the stories as well, because uh, there are eh, we are coming in, so I will tell you more stories later. But we have now our guest here. Good, he back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well the signal is not is not good enough. So um, we were talking about what I don't remember about, about, about the Congress and the conditions. Okay. About the, yeah. you were, uh, the strings that had broken during the. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't have any 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 bad impression about this aspect. I think um, I managed, or probably, or on my heart, 
everything was it was was okay. Okay. And so, when I ask you maybe um, if you were telling because it might interest uh, some of the students what they should do if uh, the string breaks during the concert. Did it happen to you, of course, as it has happened to everybody from us? What did you ever have? You have any experience that broke the strings during your performance? Oh yes, that happened a few times. Um, once was in um, in Wales in 1977 or 79, I think. I played a recital, and um, where, um, one of my favorite is Molda. By Smetan, you know, Trinacek Smetan. And um, I think at, at, the, at the middle of the piece, the C, central C string was broken. So oh. I said, okay, I change it, I change it in two minutes. And after that, every two minutes, I stop, <laughs> tune again, after two minutes, again, and at the end, at the ending, I had a very big success because I, I managed the situation. <laughs> Another time, I was in a city here in, in Romania, Sibiu, it's called, and I played Mozart's concerto. And after three or four notes of the final, uh, final movement, the concert, da, 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 <laughs> finished. Oh, <laughs> I, I think something from the middle, from the center of the heart. So I, I stopped. I said, excuse me, I had to go out because I didn't have the thing with me and to replace the, the, the string. That's the situation. I, I remember that um, once, when I was probably in 1976 in Israel, probably, yeah, um, there was a boy from America, Jim Pinkerton, who mm -hmm. before the final stage, uh, the, there was a broken string and he was very, very, um, very sympathetic for, for the audience. He, they like like um, 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 how could I explain? He was like an actor, you know. He 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 was surprised. He seems to be surprised and said, "Okay, okay, I'll be fast." And she she uh, changed the string very fast, and she continued like nothing was happening. So yeah, that is is normal. We, we use the nylon and the, the gut strings. And these are not so so resistant. We have to certainly adjust to this situation, and it's of course we cannot replace our notes by another strings except some in harmonics. But it's not the same like on the violin when the string breaks. We just have to really stop. Usually, it's yeah. necessary to. I tell you something else about a broken string. We were with the, the Philharmonic Orchestra, George Enes Philharmonic Orchestra in Germany in a tour. Uh, we played with Rado Lupo as a soloist, the piano, the, the famous piano player. And um, but in the second part was the symphony by um, by um, b -b 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 Frank, by Frank. You know, that is harp in the second and third movement. Of course. Mm -hmm. And in general, I have my strings with me. I have a set of strings with me on stage. Mm -hmm. But that time, I don't know why, I didn't took my, my, my strings to me. And during the first movement of the symphony, the central C, or I don't know which one, was broken. And imagine the beginning. And me, da, 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 da. Ba, ba, ba. Because oh it's my God. Fortunately, the orchestra, you know, the, the strings play the same melody, so the notes didn't didn't uh, uh, was played by by them. But that reminded me that the harpist should always have the strings with him her on stage mm -hmm. to change it, especially in this situation. Like in the first movement of the symphony, the harp has have, has not to play. You could, you could, and it happens during the first, first part. What, well, when you don't play, you, you you have time to to replace the string, to change it. No, absolutely. So it's a lesson. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you have you have experience not only as a fantastic soloist all around the world, but you were in the orchestra as well, and you are also teacher. I remember two years ago or three years. It's already three years. My goodness, when I was in Romania with the Czech Philharmonic.
I visited you at your university. So are you still, uh, how long have you been teaching there at the, at the school? Well, at the school, I began in 1981 at the Conservatoire, National University of Music in Bucharest. I began in 1981 and I still teach there. And this is uh, around 40 years of activity there. Yeah. And at the Philharmonic in Bucharest, I came in 1977 and retired last year in August. I mean, after 42 years of orchestra. Well, I'm 73 now, and I think it's enough. I think it's the right moment to say goodbye. But I remain with the music. And um, I think it's, it's better for everybody, and especially for me, to say Goodbye, because you now it's time for everything. It's a time for everything you do. It's like a beginning, no? It's a beginning, and also uh, it, there is a, an ending of every activity, of everything. So I think that last year that was the right moment for me to retire, and I'm, I'm I cannot say that I'm happy, but um, I think was the the best the best decision to to, to take. It's, so, I continue the conservatoire, yes. but not, not in the orchestra. I see, no, but it, the playing 47, 40 years, because first I played in opera, I told you, for five years, mm -hmm. and then seven, uh, 42 years in the Philharmonic. Mm -hmm. I'm a little full of orchestra. No? <laughs> so, so you amazing, amazing way, amazing, actually your, your path was really long with the orchestra and it, it, you have to be very strong to decide to leave such a group because if, if we are get used to hear the, the wonderful sound of orchestra around us, it's really you know, very I know, I knew that, sorry, I knew that this moment of retirement will come and I prepared it. I, I see. prepared it especially on the solistic way, on the solistic activity. I felt that uh, I don't have the same level, the same uh, the same uh, quality of playing like before. And I felt it and little by little, I played less concert and less difficult concerts or, or solo pieces. And I was used to the idea that um, little by little, I'm going to diminishing my activity in a such way that when I will uh, when I say okay, goodbye, to avoid the shock of retirement, mm -hmm. you know. So that's why I I feel very 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 well. I I not feel stressed. I don't feel the the lack of hard playing now. If I will, I will feel again the uh, the attraction, I mean, the need to play again. I will do it. But mm -hmm. until now, no, not at all. That's wonderful. I mean, I, we all feel now, like in your case, like we re, being retired because we are all at home. So just tell us how, how do you, what are you doing now at this moment? Are you playing, preparing, practicing, or are you totally now interested in something else? Uh, well, I don't play the harp now. I don't play in, in the orchestra. Uh -huh. But after my retirement from the orchestra, I played also a small recital with the cello, a former colleague. Um, I continue my lessons at classes at the conservatoire, mm -hmm. and um, I'm still interested in what happens in the international harp events, like this, what you do now. Um, that is all my connection now for now with music and with the heart. Certainly, uh, if you ask me what I'm doing these days, well, nothing. Stay home. I, <laughs> I sometimes I go out for a short walk, one hour a day, or something like that, but nothing special. Um, but when we shall come back to the real normal life, um. This will be my activities. I will not go back to the orchestra. Mm -hmm. Probably I played very long time. Sometimes maybe it's been too much because since I was 30 years, 30 years I think, 
I had three activities. I mean, orchestra, teaching, solo activity. Mm -hmm. So, doing so long time, such long time, all these activity, it's been uh, probably too much. Uh, and it's okay that I retire now. I think I feel I feel very well. That's the, very important. Yeah. If you feel comf comfortable with it, and if you feel yes, you absolutely don't feel really miss it, but certainly they miss you because you were part of the orchestra, so certainly they missed you. But it's good that you feel very well. Then it's uh, saying here, I don't like it very much. They say nobody it's uh, uh, it's uh, replaceable. Well, I think it's no everybody is replaceable, but it doesn't matter. They will manage without me, and I manage myself. <laughs> we remain in good relationship, but um, they collaborate. You know, many heart many instrumentalists after they go to to uh, retire, they continue to to play in that orchestra like an extra like uh, collaborate like um, freelance well i decided not to do this mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that's enough mm -hmm. and, and when i say it's enough it's enough so you have to feel very comfortable with yourself and yeah do you have any like funny stories from your from your concert life that does something happens because we all went through some very funny things so do you remember anything very funny to to share with us funny funny yes i will tell you <laughs> that's funny and not you know when i prepared the competition in in israel 1976 i remember that um in order to be prepared for the for the contest itself i played several recitals in Romania. Mm -hmm. At one of at that time I played for the opera in Constanza. At one of these recitals, because the public was not used with the repertoire, the harp mostly from 20th century, they used to to clap after every every short intermission or pause. And I said, please don't do this. Uh, you you do this only when after I uh, I am I'm going out from the stage, and um, the next the next piece it's a sonata who has um, has three parts. Please don't don't uh, uh, upload between parts. And I began the sonata by Schenek, you know Krenek. Yes. And it's a difficult piece. I don't know if you you know it. Yes. Yeah, it's too many pearls, and I'm. I, I made so many mistakes that I I should stop and I stopped and I no, but I stopped and for the few seconds I didn't know what to do and uh, I went out from the stage but nobody from the audience <laughs> club they, they didn't do because I asked them not to do it because the, the piece has three parts no <laughs> so that is one and uh, I tell to my students, do, do not announce the audience how many parts has <laughs> they, they play. <laughs> okay. And this, I don't remember. Oh, yeah. There was something else. Um, when I finished the conservatoire in 1971, I played with the, the students, or the, no, that time the, the conservatory in Bucharest had an orchestra of professionals. Mm -hmm. And uh, we played together a quite years concert. And I, after that, I played as an encore Intrada by Joseph Ta, which mm -hmm. was in the competition in Israel, in post uh, But I didn't practice it since a long time. And <laughs> after a few pages, I forget the text, <laughs> and I played it. Glissando <laughs> went out. <laughs> I finished. <laughs> so that was this. You said funny stories. Well, now I can I can consider they were funny, but at the moment it was not at all pleasant. <laughs> the situation it was not funny for, probably for you, but it's unbelievable to really know that even such a fantastic and really very famous artist as you are, we are all human beings, and these kind of things can happen to anybody. Absolutely. And it's to us how we we adjust to this situation as well ourselves. Yeah. Or 
or if you if you do mistake, you have to continue in order to you know, I don't know, create the possibility to 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 come back to the the correct text. You know, indeed, yeah. indeed. Yeah, to remake the, the continuity. Tell me, did you always travel with your own heart everywhere, or did you? No, no, no. I I traveled with my heart only traveled with my heart only in those places where there were not heart, good hearts, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the majority of my concerts I played on the local, local hearts. And uh, let's say, if in, in the last 30, 30 years we we bought a lot of instruments, good instruments, new instruments, and the situation became better. Before that, when I was younger, uh, we we had only in Bucharest good instruments at the radio orchestra, the Philharmonic. Mm -hmm. But in uh, the other cities, we had just the Russian, not really very good uh, harps from Luna Charsky company. Right. But I had to choose between playing with those instruments under those conditions, you know, or not to play at all. So I, I choose to play even those harps were not very good, but there was a way to to make my, my soul career and my... Maybe vocation, it's too much to say, but I felt always that I'm the most attracted by the solo aspect of our career than the orchestra or uh, the pedagogy. If, and I say sometimes uh, when people ask me in interviews, what, uh, what do you consider it's, it's, uh, it's more important for you, orchestra, pedagogy, soloist? I say soloist because uh, uh, nobody knows me from the orchestra or from the conservatory or little person, but the soloist, if I'm known by for, for the, the, some, some people, those who like the, the music, the harp, I'm not because I, I, I'm a soloist. And not only this, but I love to play a soloist. Yeah. It's the most difficult, but uh, it's also the, the, the best satisfaction, no? Absolutely, I you, are, you are you are by yourself, and um, you you are a champion. You are, you no? can share what you, express, you, you express yourself now in that mm -hmm. moment. You don't depend on the others, um, and you are yourself as a musician, as, as a mm -hmm. artist. No, so well. Absolutely. Maybe it's, it's a little bit a vision ego egocentric. Uh, vision but it is this is the truth because it's, it's true yeah no? it's true because we can only as we as we play solo we can share ourselves with exactly. the people and, and if you have something to share to give to the audience you do it in the, in the best way as a soloist mm -hmm. because you speak directly with the audience indeed so, mm -hmm. and um yeah, I think that is the most important thing to to say something, mm -hmm. to make sense to the music, and to feel that happened that um, communication with the the audience. Absolutely. They become yours in a way, and that is great. Those moments are fantastic. As yes. on, on the other on the other uh, extreme, how painful it is when you are not satisfied with your playing. Mm. As a soloist, mm. that, that happens sometimes to me. Not to play so 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 good that I'm really satisfied. So I suffered a lot, but what a joy when you play well, no? And so, you see that the public, the audience, like this, and uh, wants you to do more to to one course and so on, no? It's That's awesome. great. It's beautifully said, really. Thank you very much, Ivan. And yeah. I. To ask you, is there any of your dream that you are still dreaming about and you would like that it comes true? Mm, difficult question. I don't well, want to you. <laughs> I, I, I think I, um, I am a very terrestrial person. I think that the, the best thing what ha could happen to me is to, to remain, to stay in a good health mm -hmm. and to share the 
next, the following years with my family, especially, to continue with my students as long as I'm capable to give something, to teach them something. something. And um, I would like to remain serene and, uh, and balanced and in good relationship with, with humanity and with the God. Yeah. Beautiful said. Ivan, it's, it was so wonderful to have you today. And I'm really so honored and so thankful that you accepted my invitation. And I really, mm -hmm. I wish that we have a chance to meet again in a few months or next month or whenever it will be possible to talk more and to have more experiences of your really very rich life as a musician, as a person, and um, as anything what you would like to say now still to the people. We are very happy if you can share the last words. Now, yeah, there is an, an idea that came to me regarding back to my activity. You know, many of us, especially those who have qualities, who consider that they are solos, um, many of us are satisfied solo activity, the solo career, so solo playing. But I would add that being in an orchestra such long time, 47, 48 years almost, and especially in the Georgian Escort Philharmonic, which is a good orchestra, and played with many good conductors and soloists, and playing a fantastic repertoire that we don't have in our solo repertoire, be such big and so so great quality as the symphony repertoire is. I think this is an experience that we everybody of us should have. Mm -hmm. Because I learned very much from this orchestral playing. Being being sometimes close to great musicians, conductors, soloists, sometimes collaborating directly with some, some of them. And I learned to play in ensemble. And as a soloist, you don't have this this chance. That's mm -hmm. As, as uh, instrumentalist of orchestra, you have this fantastic opportunity. No, it's not like in chamber music, you are a few, you talk about you, you, among and you, you take decisions together. In orchestra, you have to adapt yourself, your, your playing to, to, to the, the orchestral way, to the requirement of the, the conductor. And if you have the chance, like I had, to play with such great conductors like Chalibidake, Seiji Ozawa, for example, mm -hmm. to name only the, the biggest, the greatest I had the chance to, to play. Not only that, if you have a fantastic satisfaction like an like artist, but you learn, learn so many things. Uh, some knowledge it's it's spoken they say they tell you what to do how to do sometimes mm -hmm. not but you you learn from from the how is that from doing having that experience mm -hmm. hearing mm -hmm. uh, collaborating uh, balancing and so so on uh, for example Chalibidake told us I think that I didn't know until he came to us in 1977, I think. That the music is not the, those notes that we play. The music is far away behind those. It's the signification of, of those. And we have to, to find out that signification, that the content, the character of that music. Is, the, the notes remain that the signs. Nobody can. The, what is significant, that what makes sense is behind the note. And if you know this, and if you practice this with such great conductors, you learn so many things. And after that, as I was also soloist, but also teacher, I could do this with myself or to teach my, my students, learning from a conductor or from a pianist, from a violinist. Mm -hmm. You know, that's great. 
So for those who say, well, I, I don't like to play in an orchestra, I say go if you have to, the opportunity to play in an orchestra and especially in a good one, go because there you will learn much more music than only if you, rem uh, if you remain a uh, heart. It's playing only the, the heart repertoire, which is good, but it's, it's far away from the symphony repertoire. Mm -hmm. so absolutely, absolutely. Play play orchestra. It is a big gift to have this kind of large opportunity. I don't hear you. So, yes. thank you very much. Yeah, this As I said before, stay negative. Stay negative. Yes? <laughs> COVID, COVID negative. Bye. All the best. Thank you. The best from us. Thank you very Bye -bye. much for the beautiful time. and. You stay safe, take care, and we'll be in contact. And certainly, we will hear you. Yeah, again. yeah no, I don't, I don't hear you. I we, don't hear you. we hear you, so it's fine. And thank you very, very much. Yeah, have a wonderful day, and thank you very much. We'll see very soon again. Bye bye.